Turning back the clock, March 6 marks the last time the University of Arizona bustled with the comings and goings of 45,000 students and 15,000 faculty and staff. Then came spring break and everything changed. ASU now moving all of its classes online and just into our newsroom tonight. Yeah, you know that logo. We have just learned the University of Arizona is doing the exact same thing. Like many institutions, the U of A moved most of its operations online. Thanks for making it through these tough times. And took up the fight against the pandemic with researchers quickly developing antibody tests for COVID-19 and novel contact tracing methods tools designed to help the greater public and create a safer environment for students who are expected to return August 24th. But instead of picking up where it left off, learning will look drastically different than it did last spring. Offering a mix of in-person and online instruction, the university will let people return in stages, beginning with classes where in-person attendance is deemed essential. To oversee the process, the U of A tapped former U.S. Surgeon General Richard Carmona, we asked Carmona more about how the university has spent the last few months preparing for the fall semester. The physical plant is ready to open, and that would include some of the modifications we've had to make in some of the buildings. Uh, for instance, we've created a dormitory, which is an infirmary. So should youngsters get sick on campus, they have a place to go where they can be quarantined so they don't spread the disease, but yet still take their classes in the rooms that they're in. Uh, we've had to look at other things to the airflow, for instance. We're looking at outside locations to maybe have some classes because it's safer outdoors. But yet in Arizona, that's tough because it's hot. So possibly putting undercover tents with uh, ventilation inside. And most importantly in the classrooms is decreasing the class size, making sure that there are appropriate barriers between the professors and the students and that spacing is maintained and ingress and egress in all classrooms and hallways are controlled. Are shutdowns part of the inevitable should the worst happen? There was one university that said if there's a death, then we would have to shut down. Would that likely happen here? Well, we're hoping it does not, but uh, the president and I and our incident command team have discussed this frequently, that what would be the trigger points should we have to close? And those trigger points would be that the community gets saturated, that there's very few resources outside. And even if it appeared that the university was safer, we still couldn't chance it, we'd shut for that. If we started to see that there was any uh, increase in disease within the campus, the threshold would be very low to shut the campus down and just go all digital. And maybe the most important part is that the students and um, faculty and staff that come back to campus, uh, they have to agree to be a part of the success of the university. That is, comply with all of the public health uh, instruction that we give them. What about large groups in classrooms? Because we've heard from professors yes. who are concerned that they're required to have so much of their instruction offered is in person. Meanwhile, students are given the choice. Are the professors still getting a say in all this? Yes, the professors do have that. And President Robbins has pointed out that any professor who feels uncomfortable can move to a digital platform to teach the classes. But we have a number of professors that wanna come back to class and they just wanna be assured that there's the appropriate spacing in class that students are not coming to class who are sick, coughing, have a fever, and so on. So one of the challenges we get, and I probably should mention it here, uh, Lorraine, is, is that, you know, I have parents have called me and said, well, you know, Surgeon General Carmona, you know, we're, we're concerned. Uh, can you assure me that my, my son or daughter is not going to get infected on the campus? I can't. Uh, we can assure you that we're doing everything we can to reduce risk. But as I point out to the parents that have called me and the president, that if your son or daughter stays home, Unless you keep them, you know, sequestered in a single room and they don't go out, they're probably going to go to the store. They're going to see their friends. They're going to do some recreation. There's risk no matter where you go. And depending on where you live, you could live in a very high risk area. You could live in a low risk area. We're doing the best we can to keep the campus as a low risk area. Also recognizing students have to be part of this solution because we know when at the end of the day from class, they go out on university, they go into town. They go recreate with their friends. And the danger is they could bring disease back if they don't practice the good public health practices wherever they are, on campus and off campus. When students are on campus, who's going to monitor and enforce all this? Are you hiring more people to stand outside of classrooms and dorms? This, this is not gonna be uh, you know punitive. It's not going to be a police state. I mean, we have enough stress in society today and we said, and we don't want our professors to have to be 
uh, you know, the, the gatekeepers. Uh, we're hoping everybody will conform with the regulations, but if student, the president said, if students fail to comply, if they go to class and they won't wear a mask, or they fail to sit where they were told to sit, they will be asked to leave the class. If they don't comply, the president said that they can be expelled because they're placing everybody else at risk. Last week during your uh, virtual uh, press conference, you and Dr. Robbins alluded to this being a matter of life and death. You've said the yes. numbers aren't quite leveling off, that we shouldn't yeah. become complacent, yet you right. remain optimistic. Sounds a bit like mixed messaging, is it? No, no, it's, I, I would say you, you've hit the nail on the head. We are cautiously optimistic. You know, Dr. Robbins and I both are physicians. We recognize that there are variables that we can control and variables we can't. So we are hoping that through our education, through our inspiration, that people will adhere to these practices. But the president in no uncertain terms said, if we see there's a lack of conformity to what we say are the best practices, or there's an increase in disease on the campus, or if resources become uh, strained in community, that's a signal that we would close down the university physically and move to a digital platform.